Welcome back. The American Angus Association and Angus Genetics Incorporated are announcing major enhancements to the breed's already sophisticated genetic evaluation. Among the changes is incorporating single-step methodology to calculate the performance data, and the Angus breed is the first major U.S. beef breed to adopt the forward-leaning practice. We sat down with AGI's Stephen Miller to discuss what breeders can expect when the new improvements take effect on Friday, July 7th. And July 7th is going to be a big day for Angus breeders because it'll be the first day they're going to have to see uh, a brand new genetic evaluation across all traits on their cattle. And uh, there will be re-ranking and animals are going to rank different for, for some traits. Uh, but this is a new methodology. Um, we've done extensive testing. and it, It's better and it's more accurate. And this is kind of a new era really for genetic evaluations. Breeders have been anticipating single step for, for quite a while now, and so they're looking forward to that. But it's, it's important that they realize that the evaluation really is um, new and improved in, in, a, in a number of ways. The one is um, new and improved methodology with single step, which is, which is better. And, but also we've got um, re-estimated and updated genetic parameters across all the traits, which can influence ranking as well as new models. Our carcass trait model, or carcass weight specifically, um, has been totally redone, kind of overhauled, and I think that's um, significant improvements there, as well as our growth model, including correlations between birth weight and, and growth traits. And finally, the economic um, assumptions that go into our dollar value models, that's an annual update, but again, that'll um, cause some differences. And also just the volume of data that's going into this evaluation. Our previous calibration was based on just over 100,000 genotypes, and now we're gonna have over 300,000. So we're basically tripling the size of the, the genotypic database that's gonna be behind the um, evaluations that producers will see on the July 7th. People have expected this for a long time, so they're gonna to wanna to see how their animals are, are ranking on what I'm going to call the new system, because it really is a new system. It's, it's, it's new in, in many different ways. And so although the traits are the same, the scale is slightly different. It'll take breeders a little while just to get uh, their mind around, again, you know, what, what is average for a yearling weight now? And what is, what's the high and what's the low? Because that's going to change a little bit. And that has to do with the standard deviation of the trait. And we publish that in, this, in the Sire Evaluation Report as well. If we look, for example, in the top 200 sires for a trait like yearling weight, uh, the correlation is well over 0.99. So, if, you know, the difference from what was published on those animals compared to what will be published in 7.7 is, is pretty much the same. The biggest changes we've made has been to that carcass weight model. So I think breeders will likely notice the biggest changes there. So if you look at the carcass weight and ribeye, the carcass traits in general, marbling for example, I think they'll see, um, because the trend is flatter than it, than it was, so they'll see a, a bigger difference there. And it's important to look at those percentile tables to see, well, my animal's marbling EPD has changed, but has he actually changed rank in the population very much? I think that'll be important. And the dry matter intake and the heifer pregnancy EPDs, because those trends have changed, the absolute EPDs in those animals will change as well. Milk is, I think, in important because the trend is flatter. So I think breeders have noticed over the years, you know, milk EPDs keep going up and up. Um, they're still going up, but they're not going to be going up as fast. A couple important dates or time that breeders need to be aware of is a new data cutoff, number one. And that is up to now, they could put data in up to the end of the day on Tuesday, and it could be evaluated for what gets put out on Friday. Whereas now with single step, because it's, um, it's a process that takes longer to compute, we actually need a bit more time. So we're gonna make the data cut off the previous Friday. So we're basically gonna take that full week to um, get those EPDs out uh, on the following Friday. Visit angus.org to learn more about the Angus genetic evaluation or the new enhancements taking place. We'll be right back in just a moment.